What can the beginning of the very first church teach us about how we should do church in the modern era? Stick around and let's talk about that. Hey y'all, it's Brian. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the first section of the book of Acts, which we're calling the church established. Now that section roughly covers the material in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. And from that material today, we're going to talk about three key principles that we can get from the establishment of the early church. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to share one thread that ties everything together from what we've talked about today and how that matters to your life and to mine. Let's dive in. As we begin studying the first section of the book of Acts, we need to ask the question, what happened? Well, roughly, we can talk about this in a series of big events. The first big event is Jesus spending time with the remaining 11 apostles. The book of Acts says that he walked around with them for 40 days, giving them many convincing proofs that he was, in fact, alive from the dead. And during that time, he's teaching them through the power of the Spirit about the kingdom of God. As he teaches them, he gives them the commission to go in all the world and make disciples. Now, that part's not recorded in the book of Acts. The book of Acts says it a little differently. The Great Commission we commonly get from Matthew 28, but the way that Acts records the commission is that Jesus tells them to not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And then he goes on to say that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them, and they will be his witnesses, starting in Jerusalem and going to the rest of the world. So the first part of this section, Jesus is with his 12 disciples, and as he's training and teaching them, shortly after that, the ascension takes place, where Jesus rises up into heaven and a cloud receives him and they can see him no longer. That shifts into the next part of this scene, where those 11 disciples, apostles, return back to the city of Jerusalem and they go into an upper room, and the total number of people there is listed as 120. Now, while they're in that upper room, they're praying, they're seeking after God, and also they choose one person to replace Judas so that the number of the apostles goes back to 12. Now, 12 is a biblically significant number. Many people see that just as there were 12 tribes of Israel, that Jesus chose 12 disciples intentionally in order to show the 12 tribes of the new Israel or the new people of God that he was creating. So they're in the upper room, they're praying, they're choosing one person who his name is Matthias that will replace Judas, and then the third thing happens, and that's the Holy Spirit shows up. We're told that on the day of Pentecost, when Pentecost had fully come, that there was a mighty rushing wind, the sound of a mighty rushing wind in that upper room, and tongues that were divided that seemed as if they were on fire rested on top of each of the people in the building. That shifts the scene to the next thing that takes place. And that next thing is they begin to speak of the wonders of God in other languages or other tongues, as many translations put it. Now that's significant for a handful of reasons. One, and probably the most important, is this is the beginning fulfillment of what Jesus said in Acts 1.8, where Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's where it starts. Well, here, the fulfillment of that is beginning. They've received power to witness, and they're speaking of the wonders of God in other languages in Jerusalem. The other reason why this is significant is this is happening during one of the festival days for the people uh, of Israel. They've come to the temple because it's Pentecost, and many of them have come from all over the nation, all over the world at the time. And so there are many people who they're hearing the gospel being proclaimed to them in their own language. This is significant because it shows us that the gospel message is not a message that's centralized or localized to one group of people, but rather this gospel message is for every tongue, for every tribe. And so we've started with Jesus and the eleven. The 11 go back to the upper room with the 120 that are there total. Then the Holy Spirit shows up. It spills over into the streets. And then finally, this section closes by Luke giving us a small synopsis or a snapshot of what life in the early church looks like. 
he tells us they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to prayer and the fellowship and breaking of the bread, and that God continued to add daily to the numbers of those that were being saved. So that's what happened. Now the question that we need to ask is what can we learn from this? Well, there are three key principles that the early church had that I believe can help us in the modern church. Number one, the early church depended on the Holy Spirit. You read in the beginning of the book of Acts that Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait until you receive the promise of the Father. And he equates that promise of the Father with them being baptized in the Spirit not many days from now. He actually, in his commission to them, says that they'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them and they'll be witnesses. See, the early church had a deep dependence on the Holy Spirit. I think that many of us in the modern church, us modern Christians, need to go back to a deep dependence on the Holy Spirit. We need to have the attitude that Jesus gave to these disciples, that we're not going to leave our, quote, Jerusalem. We're not going to step out into any kind of ministry or any kind of thing for the kingdom until we have the empowering of the Holy Spirit. The second thing that we can learn from the early church is they had a deep commitment to community. Everywhere in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2 that we've talked about, we see the early Christians are together. It even says on a few occasions that they devoted themselves to community, to being together. And so one of the things that we can learn from the early church in our modern church is how critically important community is. There's the old saying that no man is an island, and that's a reality. The Christian life is not a life for lone rangers. The Christian life is a life where we're called to community. Look at all the awesome things that happen in just this section in community. The original 11 disciples are together and they're commissioned in community. Then they go back to the upper room with the 120 total and there they're praying in community. There they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in community. Then they spill over into the streets of Jerusalem and they're on mission in community. And so we cannot overemphasize the value of community in the Christian life. And so we can learn from the early church that community matters. The third thing that we can learn from the early church is that they had a devotion to prayer. We see at the early stages when Jesus has commissioned these early apostles and they return to the upper room, the Bible says that they devoted themselves to prayer. Now, it's interesting that when you read that in Acts chapter 1, it's not just the 11 apostles that devote themselves to prayer, but actually all of those who are in the upper room. They devoted themselves to prayer. Then the Holy Spirit comes on the back of their prayer, and they go into the streets, and they're witnessing, and they're doing, they're sharing about all the great things of God. But notice how this section ends in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Luke tells us that they devoted themselves to a handful of things, and one of those handful of things is prayer. They devoted themselves to community prayer. So we see before the Holy Spirit shows up, they're devoted to prayer. We see after the Holy Spirit shows up, they're still devoted to prayer. We can learn from the example of the early church by devoting our lives and our ministries to prayer. There's an old saying that nothing happens outside of answered prayer. And the reality is that God delights in answering the prayers of his children. So we can learn from the early church how important it is for us to devote ourselves to prayer. So we've looked at three principles that the modern church can learn from the early church. But now I want to show you one big thread that ties it all together. It's bonus tip time. The one big thing that ties this all together is the theme of God's plan. Everywhere you look in this early section of the book of Acts, you see the plan of God being fulfilled. It was God's plan that they waited in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit. What happened? The disciples went to Jerusalem and waited for the power of the Holy Spirit. It was God's plan that the Spirit would empower them to go and be his witnesses starting in Jerusalem. What happened? The apostles were waiting. The Holy Spirit showed up and empowered them for witness beginning in Jerusalem. It was God's plan that they prayed together in community. What happened? 
Yet again, they were fulfilling God's plan by being together in community and praying. Everywhere you look through this section, and as we'll see as this Acts course continues, it happens all throughout the story of God's people. God has a plan, and God's plan for his people will prevail because God is sovereign. There's one thing I've learned over the years, and that's this. God's sovereignty is greater than my anxiety. And so as we look at the thread that ties these three principles together, that thread can give us great trust and great comfort, knowing that it is God who is at work and nothing can stop the plan of God. So wherever you are today and however you are interacting with God and with his word, as we have a deep dependence on the Holy Spirit, as we commit to living in community like the Bible did, and as we commit to trusting and being devoted to prayer, we will see God's plan come to pass as we go out and live on mission for Jesus. In our next video, we're going to look at the following section of the book of Acts, which is the ministry in Jerusalem. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell icon so you can be notified when that video comes out. We're going step by step through the book of Acts in this course, helping you learn the word of God and praying that you interact with the God of the word. So guys, as always, I'm Brian. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Bye.